Hey everybody, this is Roblox. Welcome back to the Defense Channel. Today we are going to be taking a look back at the most popular video ever on this channel and one of my favorite ships the U.S. Navy has ever had, the USS Long Beach. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. The USS Long Beach was the first nuclear-powered surface combat warship in the world. Originally, the ship was intended to be of a smaller frigate design, but was later scaled up to cruiser size and specifications. USS Long Beach was actually authorized as USS Brooklyn, but the name was changed shortly after authorization. She was laid down on December 2nd, 1957, launched on July 14th, 1959, and commissioned on September 9th of 1961. She was built by the Bethlehem Steel Company's Four River Shipyard in Quincy, Massachusetts. The ship was built using a large amount of aluminum, resulting in her call sign of Alcoa. USS Long Beach was oddly designed and commissioned without any gun aboard. In April of 1962, President John F. Kennedy visited the ship and it is said that he ordered the Long Beach to be equipped with the two 5-inch guns that were installed aboard the ship later that year. Vice Admiral Eugene Parks Wilkinson, who had commanded the first U.S. nuclear-powered submarine USS Nautilus on her maiden voyage and was a captain at that time, was the Long Beach's first commanding officer. Long Beach was the last U.S. Navy vessel built on a cruiser-style hull design. The Ticonderoga-class cruisers and the Virginia, California, and other classes that we have discussed recently were all built on scaled-up destroyer hulls. USS Long Beach was 721 feet long and displaced over 15,000 tons. She was powered by two C-1W nuclear reactors and had a top speed of 30 knots. With nuclear propulsion, the ship's range was limited only by the need for resupply of food and other necessary items. The ship carried a complement of 1,160 officers and seamen. Let's take a look at the weapons and sensors. The USS Long Beach was equipped with a variety of different sensors and arrays for different purposes. These included the ANSPS-10, which is a two-dimensional surface search radar manufactured by Raytheon Technologies. It also included the ANSPS-12, which is a two-dimensional air search radar manufactured by Bendix and Westinghouse Electric. The ANSPS-32, also known as the Hughes Scanfar, was the first phased array radar system to be deployed by the U.S. Navy and installed on the USS Long Beach and the USS Enterprise. It consisted of two search radars, the ANSPS-32 and the ANSPS-33. In 1982, the system was removed from Long Beach and was replaced by the ANSPS-48 during a comprehensive overhaul. Aboard the Long Beach, the system used the ANSPG-55 radars for missile guidance. Despite its failure to enter widespread service, the lessons learned from the SCANFAR system were applied to the follow-on Aegis Combat System and the associated AN-SPY-1 Passive Electronically Scanned Array Radar. The ANSPS-48 3D Air Search Radar is a U.S. Naval Electronically Scanned Array Air Search 3-Dimensional Radar System manufactured by ITT Excellus and deployed in the 1960s as a primary air search sensor for anti-aircraft warships. The ANSPS-49 2D air search radar is a United States Navy two-dimensional long-range air search radar built by Raytheon that can provide contact bearing and range. The ANSPG-55 Terrier fire control radar is an American tracking and illumination control radar for Terrier and the RIM-67 standard missiles. It was used for target tracking and surface-to-air missile guidance as part of the Mark 76 missile fire control system. The ANSQS-23 sonar was an anti-submarine warfare and sonar system providing search detection and tracking capabilities for surface and subsurface contacts. Let's take a look at the weapons and armament. The ship's armament was mainly based around guided missiles. Originally, the ship had two twin Terrier guided missile launchers, but these were later replaced with launchers for the standard Missile 1. USS Long Beach also had a twin Talos guided missile launcher that was later removed and replaced with a box launcher for Tomahawk cruise missiles. She also carried launchers for Harpoon missiles as well. In addition, Long Beach had two 5-inch guns, two triple torpedo launchers, one 8-cell ASROC launcher, and two Phalanx SeaWiz systems. Let's take a look at the ship's operational history. The USS Long Beach was originally assigned to the U.S. Atlantic Fleet and homeported in Norfolk, Virginia at Naval Station Norfolk. She conducted shakedown testing of her weapons and propulsion systems from October to December in 1961. After conducting missile tests off Puerto Rico, Long Beach sailed for Bremerhaven, Germany to conduct port calls there and in other North European ports. Long Beach returned to Norfolk on February 7, 1962, and following her return home, she trained again in the Caribbean region. In April of that year, she served as flagship for Admiral Robert L. Dennison, 
who was then the U.S. Navy's Atlantic Fleet commander. The ship conducted exercises off the coast of North Carolina and Virginia. During her time in the Atlantic Fleet, Long Beach was reviewed by two U.S. presidents, both John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson. After overhaul and installation of new equipment at Philadelphia Naval Shipyard, Long Beach trained in the Caribbean and sailed August 6, 1963, to join the U.S. 6th Fleet in its Mediterranean peacekeeping operations. She returned to Norfolk on December 20th for coastal and Caribbean operations through April 28th when she set, sailed for the Mediterranean to join aircraft carrier Enterprise and guided missile frigate Bainbridge in the formation of the first all-nuclear powered task group in May of that year. The force operated in the Mediterranean testing its unique capabilities until July 31st when it sailed under Rear Admiral Bernard M. Streen from Gibraltar on an around-the-world cruise. This operation, dubbed Operation Sea Orbit, demonstrated the strategic mobility of U.S. naval nuclear-powered surface forces independent of the normal fleet logistic support system. During 58 steaming days, Long Beach steamed over 30,000 miles at an average speed of 25 knots without being refueled or resupplied. In the course of the voyage, Numerous foreign dignitaries visited the ship, both during visits off coast of Africa and in port calls at Karachi, Pakistan, Melbourne, Australia, Wellington, New Zealand, and Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. An unqualified success, the operation proved to the people the world over the tremendous increase in capabilities nuclear power brought to the U.S. Navy at the time. In 1966, USS Long Beach completed a nuclear refueling and set sail to join the U.S. Pacific Fleet based out of a new home port, her namesake, in Long Beach, California. The ship then conducted three successive deployments to the Vietnam Theater, the first being from November 1966 to July of 1967. During this deployment, the ship served as the Positive Identification Radar Advisory Zone, or PIRAS unit, in the northern Gulf of Tonkin. Her main responsibility in this role was to sanitize returning U.S. strike aircraft, which basically meant ensuring that no enemy aircraft were attempting to evade identification by hiding amongst returning friendly aircraft. Additionally, the ship provided support for onboard search and rescue helicopter units. During this tour, Long Beach was responsible for directing the downing of one Soviet-made aircraft that was attempting to engage South Vietnamese naval units. The shootdown was executed by an F-4 Phantom II under control of a Long Beach Air Intercept Controller. The cruiser then returned to Long Beach, California in July of 1967. In 1968, the ship was redeployed to the Gulf of Tonkin, shooting down a MiG-21 fighter jet with a RIM-8 Talos missile on 23rd of May in 1968 at a range of 65 miles. In June of the same year, she downed another MiG, this one at 61 miles. She also directed other MiG kills by American fighters. She was the first ship to shoot down an aircraft using service to air missiles in the Vietnam War, and the incidents were not immediately publicized for obvious reasons. USS Long Beach received a Navy unit commendation for her actions during the Vietnam War. From March 1970, extending into late 1971, USS Long Beach underwent another refueling and overhaul at Mare Island Naval Shipyard. In March of 1972, she again sailed for PIRAS duty off of Vietnam, downing several enemy aircraft and rescuing 17 U.S. pilots. She deployed again in 1973 for support operations in the Vietnam Theater. Long Beach deployed again for routine operations with the U.S. 7th Fleet from November of 1974 until June of 1975. During this deployment, Long Beach performed routine duties in the Western Pacific and Indian Ocean, performing escort duties for the USS Enterprise. In 1975, the ship changed home ports to Naval Base San Diego in California. USS Long Beach deployed again from September 1976 until March of 1977, during which she conducted multinational naval exercises with other nations. Around this time, Long Beach was identified as being suitable for conversion to accommodate the newly developed Aegis combat system and part of the plans for a force of nuclear-powered Aegis cruisers, but that plan was not implemented. From April to October of 1978, she operated as part of a USS Enterprise battle group. USS Long Beach entered the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard to undergo a midlife conversion, during which time the SCANFAR system, consisting of the ANSPS-32 and 33 radars, was removed from the forward superstructure and enhanced flagship facilities were installed, along with modern radars such as the ANSPS-48. The standard SM-2 ER missiles and associated modern electronics replaced the obsolete Terrier system. In addition, at this time, two Phalanx SeaWiz close-in weapon systems were installed, along with two Harpoon surface-to-surface -surface missile launchers on the fantail. From January to July of 1980, Long Beach again deployed to the Western Pacific and the Indian Ocean. During this deployment, 
she rescued 114 Vietnamese boat people off various coastlines. In 1985, the BGM-109 Tomahawk cruise missile system was installed with two four-cell armored box launchers on the fantail, with the harpoon launchers being moved to different areas of the ship. In October of 1987, she participated in Kuwaiti tanker reflagging and provided anti-aircraft cover during Operation Nimble Archer. Long Beach conducted Tomahawk cruise missile tests and exercises as well through the 1980s. USS Long Beach sailed as an escort alongside the battleship USS Missouri, providing escort duties after the Gulf War of 1991. Long Beach deployed to the region beginning May 28, 1991 to support Operation Provide Comfort, which was after Operation Desert Storm was over and major hostilities had ended in February 1991. In June of 1991, Long Beach took part in Operation Fiery Vigil, evacuating U.S. military personnel from two bases in the Philippines, Clark Air Base and U.S. Naval Base Subic Bay, during the volcanic eruption of Mount Pinatubo. There was originally a plan to fully upgrade Long Beach with an Aegis combat system in the early 1990s, requiring that her superstructure be completely rebuilt. Due to cuts in the defense budget after the 1991 Gulf War, as well as the higher operating costs and number of crew required compared to conventionally powered ships, the decision was made to decommission all nuclear cruisers from the Navy as their reactor cores ran down. These would then be replaced by the upcoming Ticonderoga-class cruisers and the Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, which were designed from the ground up around the Aegis combat system. Long Beach had been refueled during her 1970, 1980, and 1992 refits. The decision was made to decommission her in 1994. A deactivation ceremony occurred on July 2, 1994 at Norfolk Naval Station, and the ship was towed over to Newport News Shipbuilding, where her entire superstructure was removed and her reactors were defueled. After this work was completed in the winter of 1995, the hull was towed through the Panama Canal to Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. Long Beach was stricken from the Naval Vessel Register on May 1st of 1995, more than 33 years after she had entered service. Now, as of the time we made this video, actually around the time the original video was made, last we knew the uh, reactors from Long Beach were still in long-term storage at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard. I have not seen any evidence that the, the reactor compartments themselves have been moved anywhere, but if they have, let me know in the comments. I want to thank you guys for watching the Defense Channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. If you got suggestions, comments, anything else, leave it down in the comments, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.